Baseball or football? Uh, shark fishing and riflery. <laughs> That's a good answer. I'm, I'm right in saying you don't have a, a chemistry background. You went to no. university here in UMass, University of Massachusetts, but you didn't right. study anything related to chemistry. I, I, I was fascinated by ink chemistry from a young age, though, and I, I was, uh, I did uh, correspond a lot and have experience with some of the retired uh, Carter's Inc. employees. Uh, and uh, Frank Dubiel is a local here o over in Fall River, and uh, I had extensive dealings with him over, over a few decades. And uh, he was originally trained as a dye specialist. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was, he was a slavish advocate of Schaefer Inc. And uh, I, I actually re remember after uh, Noodler's Inc. didn't come into being until after his passing. And, and sometimes I thought, uh, because he had a very acerbic way about him and, and he could be really harsh, uh, that maybe Noodler's Inc. was being delayed because uh, Frank would have objected too strenuously. Okay. Yep. <laughs> the instinct on ink came from dealing with the production from the United States Civil War because I actually dealt in some vintage inks that could be rehydrated that dated back to the Civil War uh, back in the in the late 80s and from that era to about uh, the 1960s uh, you get exposed to a lot of the advertising campaigns the different material from the Carter's Inc. Company from Sanford's Inc. Company and uh, the efforts by the major pen manufacturers to uh, brand and market their inks, it, it, it becomes an encyclopedia. And some of the efforts by those companies, I think chemistry is, is it's a double-edged sword. Sure, it would help uh, in, in terms of developing new products, but I've noted that in the chemistry world, there exists a, uh, a belief that these are the rules this industry plays by, and you can't do a variety of set things because that would violate industry tradition and industry rules. Mm -hmm. And I, I think a, a lot of that, uh, for instance, this tradition of not cutting a, a nib uh, down to the section uh, to uh, enable uh, greater flex and uh, to assist it in other ways and flow and the like. They, for some reason in the fountain pen world they always believed in cutting a nib uh, about a third of the way and no more. Uh, in chemistry there are people who uh, if an ink technology came out in 1998 or 2005 uh, you can't apply it to a fountain pen. A fountain pen's an older technology, and that's a different set of rules. And uh, I, I thought that that's a distinct disadvantage if you have that mindset. Okay, so that so that was the same reason that you then thought that you would release your own range of pens, again to bring in some. They they were gone. Uh, the local retail stores. Uh, I I watched Office Max, AC Moore, Michaels, and Staples like a hawk. I would I would draw. Uh, on the dust on top of their ink bottle cases and see if they had moved in six months and was dismayed sometimes that some of their product was actually sitting there for six months and nobody yeah. had bothered to dust it. And uh, then then you had uh, just a decline in, well, the, the Parker Vector, they had the Parker Vector, the Waterman Phileas, they, they, they had cross pens that were self-filling and they even had a cross ink. And then all of a sudden, there's no longer a bottled Parker ink. There's no longer a bottled Schaefer ink. Uh, Schaefer school pen doesn't show up on the shelf. Uh, the Waterman Phileas is no longer there. There's no Parker vector. And the fountain pen section of these stores began to disappear before my eyes. And it's, it's obviously a hobby and an industry I care a lot about. And there was the online world where they don't force people to pay for shelf space. Because if, if you wanted to get, say, a new line like Noodler's Ink Pens into one of these big box stores, uh, it greatly increases the cost to the average consumer. There's 
uh, advertising allocations you, you have to pay. You have to pay for shelf space, you have to pay for uh, special packaging with barcodes on it, and you can't concentrate on utilitarian packaging to make sure that the buying customer, the vast majority of their resources and their money goes exclusively into the pen they just purchased and not paying for shelf advertising. I, I was dismayed some of the brands were paying 50% of the final sale price mm -hmm. was advertising related costs. And that's horrific. And it's a, it's a built in disadvantage to that system. And thankfully over the past many years, uh, that entire system has been turned on its head. The big box retailers can't get away with that anymore because of the online world. And uh, fountain pens have actually had a resurgence. The variety online is, has become stunning. And I actually think we're, uh, we might be experiencing a second golden age of the fountain pen because mm -hmm. of the online revolution. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And we've, we've seen a steady growth in sales in the 14 or so years that we've been selling fountain pens online. And more young people getting interested into it because of um, new features that are available in pens that are more affordable, like the Ahab being a flexible nib pen that they wouldn't have been able to experiment with and try calligraphy and copper plate writing. So there was significantly yeah. more young people uh, yesterday at the Boston show than uh, than there were in the 1980s. Yeah. Uh, they no longer have the auction. I, I remember the auction, uh, the first auction I attended was on, under uh, it was at the, I believe, Park Plaza Hotel under a chandelier in a ballroom and it was opulent. It was like the gilded age of the 1980s and people were bidding up to $19,000 on a pen. Uh, crazy, crazy money. And uh, yesterday, the pen was viewed as a writing instrument mm -hmm. and something that was affordable enough to be competitive with any other writing instrument, which is a complete transformation of the entire industry from, from uh, these vintage pens that were this erudite, godlike specialty item of incredible cost uh, to something that uh, an average person uh, with, a, with a budget, some people who were students and still borrowing money to pay their tuition, uh, who were able to afford pens and uh, delight in the hobby. Mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a nice transformation. Uh, I prefer it that way than having $20,000 pens. Yeah, no, I can understand that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Should we stop that there? Because I've got my leg crossed and my leg's gone dead. <laughs>